This is a meditation to deepen your sense of relaxation. Take a nice, slow, deep breath, breathing in and out. And picture yourself in a beautiful forest, just lying there on a blanket on the earth, hearing the wind and the trees, the birds, feeling the wind against your skin. And as you rest there in this peaceful forest, Sense that the earth below you removes your tension from you as it pours from your body into the earth. Emptying all your tension and the muscles into the earth. Letting the earth take everything you don't need in your body away and feel that sense of relief, sense of calm in the body. And as you release all tension and negativity into the earth, you also sense at the same time the sunlight coming through the trees, pouring onto you and radiating into every cell of your body restoring you with energy and light, bringing a sense of vitality and calmness. Just allow yourself to enjoy this experience in this peaceful forest, continuing to allow the earth to remove all the tension dumping it into the deepest parts of the earth where it dissolves and disappears. And at the same time, allowing that sunlight coming through the trees to pour into every cell of your body, filling it with life, vitality, calmness, clarity, Take one last deep breath and return now to your daily world and daily life knowing you can come back to this visualization whenever you want and refresh yourself at any moment of the day. Greetings of peace to everyone. Very warm welcome and good day to all. I'm Dimple, honored to be your host for today. So yet we are here with another live talk by Meditation Cafe on climate change with Golo Hills. Now, he is an advisor of renewable energy, Brahmakumaris and World Renewable Spiritual Trust. My brother Golo was born in 1960 in Frankfurt, Germany. He joined Brahma Kumaris in 1984. And he's an experienced meditation teacher who lectures on a wide range of spiritual and environmental topics and has traveled more than 75 countries. In 1990, Golo moved to India and founded the Brahma Kumaris Solar Department. So, in 2009, Golo became the founding member of the Brahma Kumaris Environment Initiative and each year since has participated and lectured in the United Nations Climate Conference Change. From 2010 to 2017, he has coordinated and designed and con the construction of the India One at 1MW Solar Thermal Power Point. 2021, Golo Bai 
co-founded the meditation platform for yogis for the future. Now, there's so much to talk about him. He has done TED Talks, and I'm sure he is not a new face to you. You have, may have, you have watched him in our first episode. And this is the sequel, part two, Climate Change, where we want to discuss whether technology can actually, can we fix the problem? Do you think we can think outside the box and fix the problem? So through our strategy and inviting Golovai to continue our talk to the second part. Now, if you have not watched our first part, you can catch it on YouTube. And it doesn't matter because Brother Golo is going to revise a little bit concept of uh, what we covered in our previous talk. So Brother Golo, it's all yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Dimple. And uh, thanks very much also to the team of Meditation Cafe to invite me and to um, organize such a, um, a three trilogy, you can say, about um, climate change, which is indeed a, a topic which is uh, concerning everybody. Um, I was just in South India. I just came back actually yesterday evening. And uh, in South India, there's uh, heat wave, early heat wave and drought. And uh, people say, oh, get very hot very early. And they were all uh, thinking what is going on. And slowly, slowly, everybody understands this is part of this um, climate change, which is being talked a lot. Um, and um, I'm very glad that uh, there is the chance to uh, talk a little bit more in detail today in this session. And uh, as Dimple has said, um, I will sort of talk, uh, share some of the um, facts, what is going on uh, in this uh, session also, because uh, not everybody has seen the first one. So without further ado, I will start the slides and uh, I have to share the screen. Then uh, I will have to go here and I will have to click here and open and share. So. And uh, now, very, very soon, the slide should appear. It takes a couple of seconds to load it because uh, we try to arrange it in such a way that I'm also available in the background and you can see me. So can you see me now? You can see the first slide. Dimple, is it okay? All right. Yes, yes. Wonderful. So as mentioned, uh, the question is, uh, can technology and strategy fix the problem? or we have to think a little bit outside of the box. This is the big question. And just a couple of um, uh, introduction uh, facts about climate change. Um, um, climate change is happening already. Uh, to 2024 was the hottest year on record. And um, the situation is slowly at the brink of sort of getting a bit out of control. Um, here you have some of the effects of climate change, which we all experience to some extent and will experience more in the future. So first of all, we all can feel rising temperatures, which is causing more storms um, and uh, more and uh, worse forest fires around the world. And of course, because of rising temperature, also we get more droughts all over the world. And uh, this we can experience already to great extent in many, many places, Africa also is affected a lot. And uh, because of this uh, change of environment and temperature, animals uh, suffer also a lot. Uh, there's an animal extinction, but uh, there's also sort of biodiversity loss, uh, which is happening all over the world already. And humans are also affected. Uh, the health of the world population is affected. People will have more heat cramps, uh, exhaustion or heat strokes. And last year, I think they said 50,000 people in Europe that died because of the extra heat. Yeah, and then of course we have rising sea levels, which will affect us also very badly in the near future, already affecting us, uh, and economic losses. Nowadays, it becomes difficult to find an insurance policy for a sea, sea house, a sea beach house in Florida because it's getting hit so many times by storms. And uh, already, uh, the economy is taking quite a hit because of climate change and the associated costs. It is estimated that the cost right now of climate change are up to 400 billion euros, 400 billion 
dollars per year. This is more damage than it would cost actually to fix the climate change. Isn't that interesting? So uh, having said that, uh, let me come to the next one. So that is just a bit uh, to make you aware what is in the pipeline. These are mostly pictures from Germany, which is supposed to be very green and very beautiful. And we also in, in beautiful Germany, green Germany, we face drought, uh, forest fires, and um, the rivers are very, very, very low. And uh, there's a actually a triple, um, there's a sort of a triple um, a sort of dilemma which we are facing in the world. Uh, of course, the small little disruption was COVID, which is almost over, which is still circulating, but humanity has adjusted, luckily. And uh, we have uh, climate change is a big tsunami, but we have also a recession associated and behind is coming the uh, collapse of biodiversity, which is all interconnected. And um, people are talking now of a poly crisis, which is so in, uh, going to hit our planet uh, and affect all our day-to-day -day life. And um, uh, despite all this uh, um, dramatic outlook, a really dramatic outlook, I would say, catastrophic outlook, uh, um, we have to stay optimistic. It's very, very important uh, to stay happy, to stay uh, focused, to build up inner resilience and strength in order to deal with the situation. If we are going into despair and says, oh, what can I do? I don't want to do anything. Then for sure, um, we will not see this crisis as a chance for transformation and for change. And if we're able to rise our consciousness and see behind what is going on, it will help us to deal much better uh, with the coming events. So, um, Brahma Kumaris has created a environmental initiative in order to uh, propagate all our ideas and our concepts and spread um, strategies and uh, also highlight the technology which we're using, but also bring uh, to the people a change of mindset, um, inspire them to change their lifestyle, inspire them to change their thoughts and their emotions and build up inner resilience. Therefore, we have created 15 years ago the Environmental Initiative and we are present at all the UN conferences, United Nations Environment, uh, Convention for Biodiologic, uh, Biological Diversity, which is the um, which is the biosphere, United Nations on Water, uh, the Ocean Conference, and uh, the Desert uh, Convention to, desert, to Combat Desertification. Are your complicated words, and also about food systems. So all this, uh, we are all present at these different uh, conferences, and there we sort of highlight our approach, what we are doing. We show practical examples, but we also bring in meditation and the inner change which is required. And interestingly, at the UN conferences now, the faith-based organizations, they are more and more being engaged and involved. Uh, this time at the climate conference in Doha, there was the first time there was a faith pavilion and we had a couple of programs there. And um, the UN now sees the faith organization or faith communities as a big um, as a big chance, a great chance to bring the message to the people and bring inspiration for change to the people and uh, bring also influence uh, towards the people. And the key areas are education, especially of young people, wisdom, and lifestyle changes and celebration. And um, we are um, interest, We are doing uh, programs there and interact also with many faith-based organizations. And this year for the first time, there was a faith pavilion at the UN, which was quite good. And we had uh, many programs and one of our sisters, she also got an award there at the faith pavilion. Uh, at the UN also, we um, have set up a Care, Share and Inspire Wisdom Studio. And we had uh, totally 14 sessions um, at this uh, at this climate studio. And at the bottom, I, I'm now in the, oh yeah, I'm now in the, in the, in the link, <laughs> sorry. Uh, in the, in this, um, in this studio, we invited scientists um, and also people from faith organization. And we had panel discussions, interviews, what are the solutions? What can we do? 
and what are ways out uh, out of climate change and what are the strategies. And if you go uh, to YouTube and you Google Care, Share and Inspire Climate Wisdom COP28, you will find our playlist uh, from the Brahma Kumar's Environment Initiative. So we have done a lot of activities at the UN conferences and uh, we also have a green newsletter. And uh, if you're interested, you can send an email to our uh, Brahma Kumars, echo.brahmakumars.org. Sister Sonia is there. And um, you can also, uh, if you are not a member of Brahma Kumars, we have also a public newsletter and you can subscribe there. And uh, so we're doing a lot of activities also to outreach to people. And of course, we have created this environmental initiative and we have the 10 ways to change. And we are inspiring people to become a change maker and become a dreamer, a creator, a visionary, a strategist, and so on and so on. All these good ideas we are trying to propagate. And of course, we try to inspire people also to, on a personal level, what you can do uh, to rethink before you shop, before you purchase, to reuse as much as possible, to reduce your consumption, and to recycle as much as possible, and to refuse also to follow all the shopping trends. So we are sort of... Um, trying to inspire people, the five R's, to think um, before they, before you do anything, what will be the impact uh, on, the, uh, on the climate and on my carbon footprint. And um, we have also a couple of sections in our um, webpage uh, about disaster management, because disaster is already happening around the world, unfortunately, and it will increase also. We will get more and more of... Um, droughts, um, water shortages, landslides, flooding events, earthquakes, um, sea water level rises, and so on. And uh, it is very good to look a little bit into disaster management and to be a little bit prepared for uh, changes which can also happen quite suddenly. Um, so there are quite a lot of things what you can do in terms of disaster management, being prepared on a personal level, but also on a community level. Uh, what you can do, have a bit of um, food reserves, a bit stock, a bit of gas, a bit of electricity, a bit of these, you know, there are different things what you can do, even uh, things which are not really costly, which will help you in case um, there is a sort of disaster. Then also we have a tree plantation campaign where I will speak a little bit later. Uh, we have yogic farming. I also will speak a little bit about this later. Uh, water conservation, as I mentioned, is very, very important. Here in Brahma Kumaris, we have built a lot of check dams. And uh, in Bangalore, in South India, they're running out of water. And now they're discussing uh, what to do. And they are coming back to this very old idea to build uh, check dams and stop the water from running off the land and allow the water to go into the ground and recharge the uh, bow wells. So check dams, water conservation, water storage, uh, catching your rainwater before it runs off is a very good thing what you can do. We also have a plastic free home campaign in where we inspire people to avoid um, one way plastic um, as much as possible. You know, if you have plastic which you are using and reusing, that's fine. But this one use plastic, you really should should try to avoid. Uh, we also have an initiative for travel compensation. For people who are flying a lot, they can put 1% uh, or 2% of the travel cost into a special account. And we are using that for reforestation and for green projects in order to sort of absorb the carbon out of the atmosphere. We also have green guidelines for our centers, but of course they can be also used for people who are not member of the Brahma Kumars. And we have in our webpage also a lot of resources, workshops, and interviews um, in which we try to inspire people, uh, educate people what is coming, what is happening, um, and uh, what is going to happen in the near future in climate change and how to respond to that. Now I want to share a little bit about tree plantation. Um, we have set up a project in India called Kalptaru, and we already planted um, uh, Two, more than 2 million trees. And the speciality of the project, it is uh, internet-based, it has an app, and you can make a photo of the tree which you plant and then upload the photo um, 
into the internet and you can count also the trees um, which you are sort of um, which you are sort of um, uh, growing. So I'm going a little bit to the side so you can see the the link also. So we are trying to um, um, inspire people all over India, the communities. We're going to a farmer, we're going into villages, we're going into colleges, uh, we're going universities, uh, we're going also to companies and institutions, and we're trying to inspire them to go for tree plantation and make a nice program, inspire everybody to bring a tree, and then, of course, also to take care after the tree and water it and maybe put a tree guard around it and see that the tree really grows Planting trees is one of the most effective things you actually can do uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, protecting the environment and nature. And, um, and somehow you have to make it also a fun project and inspire especially young people, you know. So one has to go also into the schools and inspire the school management and then go into the classes and uh, make it a, a project of pride, a project of fun. Um, project of competition, whatever you want, make it interesting um, and uh, so that the youngsters are going and planting trees because trees uh, protect the microclimate, they protect the topsoil, um, they are catching CO2 from the atmosphere and they give the needed shadow, uh, especially when the temperatures are rising. So trees are really um, all-rounders and they really help us a lot uh, to do the good things. So um, I also mentioned that I want to talk about uh, sustainable yogic farming. This is also a project which we're doing um, in our community in India. We have started almost 10 years ago. Our rural wing has started the project. And what we're doing is we have identified farmers and asked them if they're interested. And then we teach them meditation and we sort of, um, um, sort of inspired them to uh, meditate every morning and every evening with the seeds, but also meditate with the land. Meditation means you create positive affirmations. I love you. Uh, you're very good. You're my friend. Uh, you will grow very nicely. Uh, no, you don't need any fertilizers. You will find all the nutritions. Um, no bug will affect you and so on and so on. And these are the positive thoughts um, which we have uh, towards, the, towards the land and towards the seeds, and the results are quite interesting. Here, for example, you see our carrots, and uh, you see in the middle are the yogic carrots with meditation, with positive affirmations. On the one side, you see the chemical one, which are a little bit smaller, and you see the organic, which are a little bit bigger than the chemical, but also smaller than the uh, yogic. And everybody said that the yogic carrots are the most tasty. They're the most tasty, they're the biggest, and we didn't need any fertilizer and uh, we didn't uh, need any pesticides also for them, you know, can you imagine? So it's good for the soil, uh, it's good for your uh, for your money purse because you don't have to spend money for fertilizer and fertilizer to a great extent are uh, oil products. Uh, so imagine uh, what a good effect it has if we would avoid uh, more and more fertilizers. And uh, the farmer is also happy because it doesn't have to handle the dangerous fertilizers. And uh, you meditate that the bugs or the, the insects will not come and they won't come. You will have not much of a uh, infestation um, with bugs or insects also, just by the power of meditation. And the results have been so good that, a, um, that we have published them at a uh, reputed um, agriculture magazine. And we've worked with a university in Gujarat together, and they have verified the results. And uh, we work totally with 5,000 farmers. And uh, now we are working with the Indian Ministry of Agriculture, and we have identified about 80 farms in which we apply uh, this kind of uh, farming method. So this is also something which everybody of us can do, get a little garden, um, meditate with the garden and plant, plant nice, plant trees, plant a bit veggies, plant this, experiment a little bit, and create connection with nature. Because quite often we have been disconnected, especially people who are living 
in uh, urban cities, you know, in India now, more people live in big cities than they live on the countryside. I think all over the world, this is a trend. Um, and people lose connection with trees, with the nature and with the beauty. And that's why they don't take care and they're not much interested. Here in this webpage, you will find also more information about this yogic farming project, which is a very, very um, successful project, very good project, and very practically demonstrates also that our mindset, our thoughts actually have an impact into nature. Um, then uh, I would also like to uh, share with you one film which we did. It's called uh, Seeds of Change. It's a documentary of Brahma Kumar's environment. And um, it's on Echo YouTube on our on our playlist. You go to our uh, playlist on YouTube, um, Brahma Kumar's Environment Initiative. You will find our playlist. And there you will find the film. It's on the internet. And it gives a lot of inspiration um, what can be done, what we do, and how to position yourself uh, in the times of this great change which is happening around us. We also, of course, propagate a vegetarian or plant-based diet. And um, on the left side, you can see the, the scales. So all the green food items are having a very little impact on the environment, a, a, a low carbon footprint, as we say. Uh, these are pulses, weeds, um, vegetables, they're all good. And uh, very bad on the bottom are all meat products, fish, uh, beef, chicken, and all these kind of things. They have an extremely high carbon footprint. So um, if you want to do something for the nature, for the environment, become a vegetarian, or even better become vegan, become a plant-based diet. Uh, go for a plant-based diet. This has a very, very big positive impact on your personal carbon footprint. So this is a lot of things what you can do on a personal level in order to um, uh, have a good um, a feedback and uh, a good effect on the climate. And now here's some practical solutions. Um, last time I shared a lot that Brahma Kumaris uh, is one of the biggest users of renewable energies in India. Uh, we have hundreds of systems installed all over India and using them. And that is something that you also can do. But I also want to highlight only a couple of them. Um, so we are doing research in photovoltaic, solar steam, water recycling, solar hot water, solar passive architecture, solar thermal and energy efficiency. And uh, some this is a solar house which I built um, many, many years ago, 25 years ago in Dian Sarova in Mount Abu at the uh, uh, campus of the Brahma Kumaris, and this is made entirely out of mud bricks. And means it is a traditional construction method. And if you are planning to build a house, then look at the traditional construction methods which are in your region. You know, I'm sure there must be some traditional uh, methods how houses have been built 100 or 200 years ago, and try to build with the um, traditional regional uh, methods use regional construction material and uh, build with the climate, build with the environment. Some, mostly it's even cheaper than a conventional building and you will have a building which will be very, very comfortable. And the same building after 30 years looks totally grown up. And you see I have a small photovoltaic here on and on the right side up, you can see also a small wind generator. So um, these are also techniques uh, which you can use uh, in, a, in a household. I use in this building solar hot water, which is in front of the building, a collector you can see. Then on the left side, you can see the uh, solar photovoltaic, which produces my electricity. And on the right side up, I have also a wind generator. And in addition, I planted trees around the house in order to create shadow and positively influence the microclimate. So when people come in the summer, they say, oh, this building is very nice and cool. Uh, why is it so nice and cool? I say, well, I have uh, shadow and I have cross ventilation. I have a double wall and so on and so on and so on. So there are many tricks uh, what you can do, which save also your electrical bill, especially if you plan to build a house uh, built with nature, with local material uh, in a traditional style and, uh, and your electrical bill will 
uh, will be happy. Your your money purse will be happy about that because you simply need less energy to keep such a building in a comfortable temperature um, uh, situation. So uh, this is something what we can, we would, everybody can do. And I would like also to uh, talk about the solar cooking box. We have distributed many, many of these cooking boxes and they are very easy to handle, very robust, and you must Google, they're locally available. And when the sun shines, you can cook basically with the power of sun. And uh, we in Mount Abu, we have a strong sun. We can cook bread, cake, um, a normal meal with rice and soup and dal and all these kind of things. And it takes about two hours, two and a half hours. Um, and it cooks very nice, slowly, and um, uh, very nice gadget. And you just have to find out locally where it is available. Um, so this is something which everybody can use. Um, uh, and show it in a community or show it in, in, a, in a school and uh, create a bit of interest amongst the youngsters. Um, it's a very, very easy gadget, I would say. I mean, one of the most easy solar gadgets, which also not much of a cost. Um, so very, very much uh, recommended. And I give uh, five stars to the solar uh, cooking box. Um, then also we have distributed and sold more than 20,000 lanterns in India. India is one of the countries with um, 30, 40,000 villages without power uh, connection. And um, so what we have done is we uh, promote this solar lantern. Um, and nowadays, uh, as a part of camping equipment, you can buy this in Amazon. It's freely available. This is a gadget, for example, you're outdoor or you're going on a trip or you live in a region which has time-to-time uh, -time electricity failures, um, which happens, by the way, and which might happen in future more often due to climate change, because power generation doesn't like very much high temperatures. Um, it's one of the technicalities. So power stability will be affected by climate change also in future. So this is a gadget which is very helpful, a solar lantern. And nowadays they are made with LED lights. So they're very, very cheap. Uh, very reliable and they became even cheaper than this $40. You might get even now at $10 or $5 or $12, $15. You might get a small solar lamp, a solar lamp uh, which has LED light, a small solar photovoltaic um, plate and a small battery and you can charge it and you can run it the whole night. Such a gadget is also very handy, very good for emergencies uh, or just when you go outside and it's just the right thing to do, the right technology to, to use. So um, now uh, we have seen a lot of these uh, smaller systems. Here you can see uh, one of the bigger systems we have installed in our Gianza rover. And we're installing at the moment a 150 kilowatt photovoltaic system, which is very large, which is uh, worth um, $300,000. And we install a big battery bank and then we use big inverters and then we use the electricity for our community cooking. So this is for a community cooking. And the idea is with the help of this photovoltaic cells, with the help of the electricity, we send the electricity down into the kitchen and there we have large induction cooking pots. And these induction cooking pots, then they will help us to cook for our visitors and for our guests. We have around uh, up to 1,000 visitors in our campus here. And the idea is that this 150 kilowatt solar cooker uh, will be able to totally and entirely cook the food for all the people in the campus, which would be quite a good achievement. And uh, then there's a high investment in the beginning, but because the running costs are almost zero, the investments, investment slowly, slowly will come back. And of course, it's clean technology and it saves the environment and it saves the money. So this is really the right thing to do. And uh, of course, this is only for institutions, but in India now, um, railways, uh, petrol companies, uh, schools, universities, they put large photovoltaic systems on rooftop and uh, show that they have a doing something for the environment. So it becomes also something of a public relation for many companies and also to demonstrate their willingness to 
protect the climate. So these are all the activities which are good and which are helping and which is the clean technology which we need to install. Um, we also um, have a biogas plant which has been inaugurated last week. This is a little bit older picture. I have to replace it with a new one. Uh, one of our brothers, Klaus Peter, he came the design at India One, Chesima and the team, they built the power, this biogas plant. And uh, the idea is that we segregate the waste. India has a big waste problem and uh, that we collect plastic separate, uh, select uh, organic waste separate, paper separate, metal separate and glass separate. And, the, and we sell off everything and the organic waste we are uh, crunching it, mixing it with a little bit of water and pumping it in this big balloon, in this digester. And there is a fermentation going on and uh, methane gas is being created. And the idea is that we use the methane gas to run a generator. So this is a large system again, which is again some 200, 300,000 euros, uh, dollars. But it is for institution. But the good news is biogas plant is also available in a small system for a household. This actually looks like a plastic bag. It's like a big, big, ugly plastic bag, not ugly, like a black bag. And one side you can throw something in and, uh, and, and the bag becomes a little bit like a balloon, but sits on the ground. And on one side, a little pipe comes out and the methane gas goes directly to the kitchen, to your burner, and you can cook food with that methane gas. So, um, so the... Uh, and this little biogas plant in India is about uh, three hundred dollars cost. But then you have a mini biogas plant for a household, and you use the organic waste of the household plus green leaves. You know, whatever is organic, you can put inside, and inside is a fermentation reaction, and you have methane gas. And once a year, you have to clean that, and you get a sludge, which is a very good fertilizer. So. Um, this is also a solution which is available for um, uh, small scale and um, and uh, all these projects which I mentioned, um, farming, uh, solar cooker, uh, solar home light system, photovoltaic, uh, green energy efficient buildings, um, uh, creating awareness campaigns, doing things in the right direction. All these uh, projects, activities have one thing in common is they create a positive feedback loop for yourself. You have the feeling I'm doing something practical and they help in a real measurable way also the environment. So two benefits are there. You do the good thing, you help the environment. It really helps, but it also helps yourself whilst doing the good thing. It has a very uh, positive feedback loop on you and encourages you further and builds up inner strength and inner resilience. And that's exactly what we all have to do. Um, and the question was, is technology enough? Um, is clean technology enough? Um, and this technology is available and um, funds are available um, and um, it's the need of the time to change. So what stops us? So the what stops us is that we lost the connection to ourself. We lost the connection to spirituality and uh, we forgot that our inner world, our emotions and our feelings are interconnected. So as long as we don't have a holistic approach, it will become very difficult. We all know at the moment in the world, there's a lot of uh, conflicts going on and it becomes one of the major problems. And uh, a lot of uh, efforts are being done to restore peace, but becomes very, very difficult. And the reason is you first have to establish peace in yourself, become very, very peaceful, very loving, very compassionate. And once you achieve that, then you actually can achieve peace in the world. So there is a connection between the inside and the outside. And that's what's so important also in the field of climate change. When we want to bring back a clean world, a beautiful world, we have to establish this clean and beautiful world in ourselves and become the embodiment of that, what we want to see outside in the world to happen. So Brahma Kumaris, has also a very nice uh, campaign, uh, our environmental initiative. Actually, it is uh, all about um, uh, the, ten, the 10 ways to change the world. And uh, it's uh, all about uh, open the heart, be positive, follow your dream, live simple, respect life, feed the soul, 
walk the talk. And now I have a big problem reading it because my slide is being hidden. And uh, I'm trying to see that a bit better. Ah, oh no, not now. So, ah, be unlimited, eat well, and empower yourself. So what happened is actually open your heart means I open my heart to the world. I open my heart to the problems which are there, and I open my heart to God's love and to God's inspiration. And once I open my heart to this divine inspiration, I start doing the right things. And uh, it has an incredible feedback loop if I'm going to do that. And then I can, my heart becomes full. And then I can share my heart with the world and I can do the good things. So open your heart is very powerful. Then follow your dreams. You know, we all have dreams somewhere as child, what we would like to do, what we want to do. And we all have this dream of a beautiful world. So we follow this dream. We do it, you know. And this is also very, very, very power, uh, powerful. Being positive. Regardless what happens, you know, climate change, wars, conflicts, whatever is going on, we are positive. We are loving. We are positive. We stay in a good mindset. Then live simple. Um, we lost a bit uh, this uh, art of living simple. It means we consume that what we need and what is required. And we don't go too much in extravaganza. It doesn't mean that we go back to Stone Age, but it means also that we don't do crazy consumerism. So that's um, something uh, which simple living uh, tries to tell to people, go back to the roots and buy that what you need. Walking the talk, it means we should, whatever we say, we should be the embodiment. So if I talk about peace, I have to be peaceful. If I talk about love, God's love, I have to have the connection to God's love and so on and so on. So if I'm dealing, if I'm talking about climate change and what to do, I have to do, be an example also in my personal lifestyle, what I'm doing. I'm walking my talk. I'm the embodiment. Feeding the soul means whenever we do something, we should not forget that the strength comes from within, from me, I, the soul, I, the inner being. And that's my inner strength, which I have to recharge. I have to look after myself, after my inner happiness, my inner strength, my inner compassion. So time to time, regular, I have to feed the soul and make it strong, create inner resilience. And this feeding process is called meditation. Then, of course, respect life. Very big point. Respect life in all its manifestations, the forest, the trees, the plants, the grass, the nature, the clouds, the air, the water, the oceans, you know, respect all these different manifestations of life but it's respect also the life of my fellow being, which is with me. And if I do that, I automatically do the right thing. Being unlimited, very, very um, deep point, open yourself up for divine inspiration. God, it is said that God is unlimited. And when you connect to divine love and to divine inspiration, you also become to some extent unlimited. And then you think outside of the box. That's also the topic of our today's talk to think a little bit outside of the box, you know, what, what can help. Then of course, eat well, that means vegetarian or plant-based diet, and if possible, locally sourced. Don't buy too many mangoes which are growing on the other side of the world, or buy avocados which are being imported from Chile by plane or whatever, you know, because that's not very environmental friendly. So try to eat plant-based diet or vegetarian, locally sourced. And um, yeah, that's very good. Try to avoid a bit of sugar and refi uh, refined uh, food stuff. Best is uh, organically grown food, uh, locally grown food. That is very, very good. And lastly, empower yourself in all the good deeds and all the actions which we are doing. We should not forget ourselves and empower ourselves time to time. This is also connected to med meditation or reflection. And that means basically that we should not forget ourselves. A lot of people, they have a burnout nowadays. They are activists. They're doing so many good things. 
But after one year or two years, they have a burnout and they say, I can't do that anymore because they forgot themselves. So be aware that at the root of all your actions and your expressions is the self. So we have to empower ourselves quite regularly. So this is about the 10 ways which we propagate also at the climate conference. And I feel they have a lot of input to think about what I can do on a spiritual level, uh, on a level of mindset change, on the level of thought change, because our thoughts and our visions are connected to reality. There are even some scientists nowadays, they say our thoughts, our consciousness creates a sort of field and this field is connected to quantum fields and that connects the reality. So somehow we are connected to the reality um, and the reality is a creation of our consciousness. It's a very interesting approach and uh, a lot of scientists nowadays, they're researching in this direction. Uh, very, very, very inspirational to understand that our thoughts are really having a powerful impact into reality because then it sort of strengthens our creative potential. And once we understand that we have this creative potential, it makes us happy and it makes gives us strength and it gives us courage because we have the potential to bring change through our thoughts and through our visions. And then we learn that we have to sort of imagine our perfect world, a world of love, peace, harmony, beauty, timelessness, happiness, whatever you want. We imagine this world and it will become true. And uh, there's a beautiful song by John Lennon, imagine all the people creating a new world. Da -da -da -da. I forgot a bit the lyrics, but it's a very nice song. And imagination, your power of imag imagination is very, very, very strong. Don't underestimate the power of your thoughts. And therefore, we have created a platform called Yogis for Future. And uh, you can go on the internet, yogisforfuture.com, and you will find a lot of med simple eight-minute meditation commentaries for the environment, for the nature, for all the good things you want to achieve, for 10 different topics. And you can listen to them, meditate, and then you learn how to think positive upon yourself. Love yourself, accept yourself, um, come to terms with your situation and make the best out of it. And then think positive upon others. Love them, give them, give them strength, give them courage and inspire them. And then think positive on the world. And uh, as we have seen, if we think positive on the world with the power of imagination, we all can create this world which we would like to see the world where the central theme is love, love for ourself, love for the others, love for nature and the environment. And this creates peace, harmony, and beauty, perfection, purity, prosperity, happiness, justice, and timelessness. And all the good things we want to achieve, they are happening then right in front of our eyes because we understand on a spiritual level that our world, the world which we see in front of our eyes is partly a creation and is strongly influenced by our mindset, by our thoughts and by our emotion. So the biggest thing what we can do is, of course, one thing is we can change our actions, we can reduce our carbon footprints and we can do all the good things which we should do. But the most powerful thing what we can do is we change our mindset and we bring this love and this compassion for the world and this has a very, very strong effect on ourselves. It makes us happy, strong, gives resilience, but it has an effect also on nature, uh, on climate change, on the environment around us. And then we can really experience practically how that is all connected. So I thank you very much for the time uh, you spent with me. Um, we have some web pages. You will find a bit more information um, brahmakumaris.org, that is the general where you will find a lot of information about Brahma Kumaris. Echo brahmakumaris.org, you will find lots of things of, on the green topic. Um, you will find links to our YouTube channel, uh, but also interviews, 
uh, different areas, uh, how to prepare for disaster, how to plant trees, how to collect plastic, what to do this, what to do that. Also inspiration about renewable energies. You will find on the solarbrahmakumais.com. You will see our renewable energy projects and yogisforfuture.org. Uh, you will find a lot of information uh, and inspiration for meditation. So uh, I'm coming to the end. Uh, I, again, I think I have shared a lot of information with you about um, um, what is going on in climate change, that it's a quite serious story, um, that you have a lot of option, what you can do on a personal level. Um, right actions are all there. Green lifestyle is there. Uh, creating awareness, uh, inspiring people to go green. You can use solar cooking box, use a green gadget. You can start a little garden. You can do tree plantation. So many things which you just can do by, which don't cost much of a money. And uh, you can inspire your co local community to do something um, and uh, change your lifestyle in your household. But most important is to understand the power of your thoughts, of your emotions, and that all the time we are all creators. All the time we are creating the world around us. All the time we are creating the future. And once we start changing our mindset, our emotions and our feelings, we create a different energy field and we sort of radiate that energy field into nature, into the world, but we're also inspiring through the change of energy field, other souls. And then we can inspire the world for peace. We can inspire the world for cleanliness and we can inspire the world for transformation towards a world of beauty, perfection and love. In India, this future, future world is called Sat Yuga, the age of truth. And the Indians call this future world the golden age, where everything is golden and beautiful. And the sign is lamp and lion are drinking from the same well. And in Christianity, they call this beautiful future world paradise. And the good news is that we in Brahma Kumaris, we believe that we are in a transition period from this difficult time at the moment uh, towards a more beautiful world a more sustainable world and climate change and biodiversity loss. These are the crisis signals to all of us to change. And when we understand that the crisis is a chance for change, things already become more easy. So thank you very much. And I'm giving back uh, to Dimple, to the moderator. Yes, it was such a wonderful talk and so much of hope. I mean, uh, you know, you really put so much light with when we are looking at uh, like, is there a way, um, you know, uh, is something, is it really reversible? Questions like that. But I think you put it so beautifully that, uh, you know, the golden time is coming and that we should uh, embrace and let the change happen. So sometimes a negative thing may not really be that negative, you see. So that's really gives us a lot of hope. And, um, you know, there's, there are a few questions here. In fact, I would like uh, more questions to come in. Now we have a question answer session. If I think Brother Golo has answered a lot of questions so beautifully. But about the cooking box, uh, they asked, can we buy such solar cooking box overseas? Is it available overseas? Like, uh, you know, you were talking about in India. But what about other places? Well, yes, of course. Uh, as I said, you Google in your local, uh, uh, or you look in local Amazon or you Google. And uh, quite a lot of, in Europe, you can buy it locally. In Africa, you can buy it locally. In Australia, you can buy it locally. And uh, you just uh, look a little bit uh, around. And most of the country, you should get that uh, gadget. Uh, in in uh, At least regionally, you should get it. Yeah, no need to come to India and buy it from here. It's pretty big. It's almost like it's like a suitcase. You basically you need one suitcase extra. And you have to pack it nicely inside some glass. So it's a bit delicate to transport. You can yeah. actually build it also yourself. They're pretty easy. It's basically a box with a mirror and a bit of insulation. It's not too complicated. The internet is full of uh, inspiration about solar cooking box because it's so easy to make. But you did mention that it takes about two to three hours to cook, say, a decent meal or something. 
So yeah. how would that work with uh, people who are on the rush or, you know? Uh... Well, what you do is you put the solar cooking box out and at 11 o'clock in the morning, um, it's, it's for a housewife, for example, at 11 o'clock in the morning, she puts the food in, puts it in the sun. And for two hours, she doesn't have to do anything. At one o'clock, the food is being cooked. Same in oh. the afternoon. You can cook very easily. Of course, you cannot cook in the early morning because the sun is not there. So yeah. sometimes you can cook it in the evening and put it in some heat container and uh, then it stays hot overnight or something like that. You know, I've, I mean, it has a bit of limitations. You need sunlight. Okay. All right. There's another question that everything is packaged in plastics nowadays. You know, so I feel so bad throwing out plastic uh, all the time and it's consume food. So is there anything I can do to reduce plastic or, yeah? Um, there are two things. Nowadays, there are, at least in, in Europe, and I know in Australia also, there are shops coming up which are selling uh, which are selling food loose, you know, like in old days. In old days, you went with your container and they put rice inside and then uh, once and they waited and once it was enough, you know, you had a, a, a cloth bag. I show you a cloth bag. Um, here, where is my, here. Here's a nice, here's a nice cloth bag. So, you know, in the old days, you went with a nice cloth bag uh, to a shop and they filled in the food. And once it was done, you sort of did like this, you know, and you went home. And at home, you had a metal container or glass jar, and you filled the rice inside, you know? And um, so all this, I remember when I was young, um, we were going to the milkman, and uh, and we, we brought our own container. We went there, and he had this big hand pump. And you put the milk underneath, and he filled up your one or two liters, you paid, or you could say, I want one three quarter. He made one three quarter. You, you paid for it. You took it home. And uh, that was it, you know. And uh, it got recycled. And in old days, also when I was young, I remember that all the um, uh, water bottles, which came, they were all glass bottles in a, in a, in a big wooden crate. And there were 24 bottles. We used them up, put them back, and you brought it back to the shop. And you got the money, and then you got a fresh one. You know, so you always were recycling uh, these things. And then with the coming of the plastic, all this has been changed. And now we have plastic, microplastic everywhere, which is a big, big problem. Plastic is also an energy consumer, oil consumer, environmentally seen a very bad product. And so there are shops which are now selling uh, loose material or there are shops which are selling in paper, which is recyclable. And uh, in the worst case, if you cannot avoid it, you buy with the plastic, but then at least you collect the plastic uh, in your household and you make a waste segregation. In Germany, we have uh, four waste boxes in front of each house since my childhood, since 30, 40 years. <clears throat> By the way, you never say the age of a person. Just <laughs> if, I, if I would say that, if I would say that about a sister, I would get so many bad comments. You know, if I say she's she's born this and this, and then everybody's calculating, oh, oh, she's so old already. She looks unbelievable. You know, so she would freak out. Anyhow, no problem. Um, so um, in Germany, we have four boxes in front of the house, and uh, one is for paper, one is for plastic, and one is for organic and plastic and uh, something more. And then in, 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 um, at, at every street crossing, means major street crossing, there's, a major, there's another container for glass and for metal. And they have even transparent glass, brown glass and green glass. And in Germany, people follow. And uh, the lid, they take off and throw it in the little metal bin. You know, wow. because people have the awareness and are trained. So we have 80% um, waste collection and segregation at the source, which is fantastic. At the source, it means at the household. It's already collected separate in separate bins. So we have different trucks. One truck only collects the papers. He comes once a week, 
and takes the paper. And this paper in Germany, all newspaper, 80% of the newspaper and magazines printed on recycled paper. You know, so at least if you buy plastic, try to recycle it somehow. You know, because we cannot 100% avoid it. I know it. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, plastic is uh, just everywhere. You, you look at anything and everything around, it's made of plastic and, you know. So Sadly, uh, yeah, which doesn't yeah. last, which doesn't last then also, you know, it's a, it's a policy, you know, make it cheap, make it out of plastic. After two, three years, you throw it away. And uh, and that's it. And you can't repair it. You know, in old days, things were out of metal and uh, the machines and the equipment could be always repaired. You know, that was standard. Right. I remember you mentioned about biogas and you were talking about a very big plant and, uh, you know, the thing, how it works in, uh, you know, for a big thing. But how can we do such things in a practical level at home uh, in a simple way? Uh, you know, something that we could do that we can all contribute to in small. Um, for example, <clears throat> a very simple bio, bio plant is when you use a composter. So, for example, if you have the chance and can create a little garden, you know, I mean, if if you have a house or you have a little garden in Frankfurt, for example, I hired a small garden in a, in a uh, association as a garden association. So two minutes from our center in Frankfurt, we have a little um, 200 square meter garden, which is quite big. I built a little hut, put a solar plate on it. In summer, we can sit there and we put up a little garden with a little bit of veggies and green stuff. So what you can do is you can s collect all the green waste of the house and make a compost. And this is what in old days everybody was doing because it gives the best earth in the world. You know, compost, then after one year, you put it on this heap and after one year on this. So after three years, the soil, the organic waste has completely rotten. Also the leaves you can put there and everything, it has completely rotten and it has it becomes humus. It becomes the best soil in the world, fresh garden humus, you know. And I remember my grandparents, they used to do it. My parents used to do it. We had a big garden and it was normal when I was a kid, when my mother so many times said, bring the, bring the rubbish, uh, bring it on the heap. So I had to go out. I didn't like it. But uh, we put it on the heap and there was the stuff from, from the whole year. And then after one year, you sort of throw it over in the in the next location and, and then it rots more and then in the next location. So this is at least something what we couldn't do in a practical, you know. Yeah, that's and, quite and, and this is a this is a baby biogas because it's based on fermentation. And so now if you want to have the, the uh, and this releases methane gas very slowly, you know, all fermentation in the forest everywhere where you have green organic matter, which decomposes, there's a fermentation and release of gas, you know. So if you want to have a biogas plant, you can buy a baby biogas plant. In India, they are available. They're about 50,000 rupees, maybe about 400 US dollars. It's like a big bag maybe of uh, one and a half, two cub cubic meters of volume. And one side, there's an opening. You can throw in the kitchen base and on the other side, the gas comes out. It works so, so, yeah. Then you have a baby biogas plant. <laughs> Produce your own biogas. Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, okay, they're talking about yogic farming. It's a wonderful initiative how... The community, how is the community benefiting? That's the question. Uh, yogic farming. Um, yogic farming is uh, something you have to inspire the farmers, you know, because farmers are facing a very tough situation right now with climate change. They're at the forefront. And here in India also and everywhere around the world, there are big demonstrations of the farmers because they don't make money any longer because it's not raining enough or fertilizer has become too costly, diesel has to become too costly, or they have a drought, you know, so one or the other reason that things become very difficult for them. So what we do is we teach uh, farmers meditation. And uh, what we found out, if we meditate, uh, the plants and the soil will benefit. They found out through testing, analysis in the laboratory that the nutritional content in the plants is increasing. 
as well as the soil quality is also increasing. Measurable, measurable in laboratories confirmed. So when you meditate with your seeds, you meditate with the land, the quality of the soil, the quality of the uh, plant is increasing. It's up to 30%. And, uh, and uh, you save also money for the pesticides and the fertilizer, and you have much less infestation by bugs. So of course, this makes the farmer happy. And of course, we teach them meditation and a clean lifestyle. And we said, don't smoke, don't drink. Use your money for the education of your kids and give it to your wife. She will take good care of your money. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, of course, he makes a bit more money. Um, meditation makes you very peaceful, builds up inner resilience. So this helps the local communities, of course. And in India, there are a lot of small communities. And one of our sisters, she's working there. And she's trying to improve the livelihood. And one of her main topics is restoration of the local soil. It's a big, big topic because in India, uh, through the heat, the drought, the, the flooding, the topsoil has been eroded and deteriorated quite significantly, you know. So it's become very tough, especially for small communities. But it helps, you know. But you have to go there and stay with them for some time. You know? Yeah, somebody mentioned here, I talk to my plants often, adoring them and calling them cute and beautiful. But I think now affirmation is to the next level. So <laughs> this is just a comment. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if you talk, if you talk to your plants, you can talk to the world. You can talk to yourself. Bless yourself. Bless the world. Bless the neighbors. Bless the people which you don't like. Um, bless uh, the nation, the government. Everybody give love and compassion to everybody. You know, because that's what the world needs. You know, needs healing. Yeah, definitely. So with that, it was such a wonderful talk. And uh, I would love you to uh, lead us into a meditation to help us to heal this world here and uh, how we can improve and get more hope and, uh, you know, work on this uh, climate change. I think we are all having a terrible heat uh, bound today. There was a little rain here and I was so blessed to have a little coolness. So it's nice, you know, and uh, yeah, so we would have you to lead us into meditation. Yeah, now I forget how to make a nice back screen, you know. See. Okay. Okay. Ah, we leave it as it is. All right. Yeah. So um, let us all uh, relax a bit and uh, just digest all the informations which we heard today that uh, my thoughts and my emotion have such a powerful impact on the world around me and on the environment. So I'm going into a meditative, peaceful mindset, relax myself and concentrate on the middle of my forehead. That's where I am. I am actually a being of light. And this body is my vehicle. This body is my temple. And I, the soul, a being of light, I express myself through actions. I'm connecting to the divine light, the supreme being. Connect to the love, to the peace, connect to the compassion. And I tune into these powers. And I fill up myself with divine love, peace, and power. We all know the world is in a dramatic transformation. The old is dying and the new is yet not visible. And we all want a world of love and happiness, a new paradise, a new golden age, a new Sat Yuga.
an age of truth. Let us send love and power to this world. And let us create a vision of a beautiful world. People are happy. All karma has been settled. Nature is abundant. No injustice. No greed. No anger. It's the beautiful world we all want to create. Our mind, our thoughts and our emotion are very powerful. And we are all creators. We send this vibration into the future and we inspire matter to be purified. We inspire all the souls in the world to become pure, to become clean, to become happy and do the right things and free themselves of anger and greed and ego, which are the main drivers of the problems we are facing right now. I understand I have to become an example. I have to walk a talk. I am peace, I am love, I am compassion, I am free of greed and anger, I give them to the light. I visualize the new world, the beautiful world, growing like a seed, become a beautiful, strong tree, which gives beautiful fruits and shadow and allows the birds and nature to live in. I am a creator. I am a master and there is nothing nothing to worry because I am an immortal being of light and this world is my playground and I am staying under the divine protection of the supreme light which will guide me, empower me, and help me in my own transformation, but also in the transformation of the whole world. I am now at peace. I am relaxed. And I am empowered. Everything is okay. And everything will be okay in the future also. I'm slowly coming back. 
here in this world. But I take these qualities and this power with me. It becomes part of myself. And whenever it's needed, I use this method. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you. Such a wonderful meditation. Really spreading a lot of peace and calm to the entire world. Something that we need so much. Looking forward to our part three. Climate change series is not over. This is just the second part. And the third part is coming up on 20th of April. On Saturday, same time, this time we will talk about karma of the past, how a spiritual solution, today Brother Golo did mention a lot about meditation and how we, we can lead to a spiritual solution to this, but let us be guided more by Brother Golo himself to share more about spiritual solution and how with our karma, and the past of our karma actually help with this. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you also for the um, Meditation Cafe team to organize this event. And thanks to all the audience to spend all the time with us. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you. Om Shanti. And yes, all of us, it's nice to put on your cameras. Let's take a look from uh, Brother Golo himself before he leaves us and switch on your camera. We would like to see all your wonderful faces. So, yeah, all of us, we want to say hi. Let us join us together with this wonderful journey. Mm. Such wonderful faces. Till we meet again. Okay. Nice to see you all. Okay, Om Shanti, Om Shanti.